so much to be done, our Easter cantata, uh, the sunrise service, or there's so many things that uh, are going to take place. And sometimes we get a little overwhelmed because we're just a small country church. But Lord, we're thankful that we get to be active and involved and that we reach out to our community. And these are community outreaches. And might we be faithful, Father, to participate and get involved. And then, Father, I pray for our country. I pray you'll watch over us here in the United States. And then I pray for those of Ukraine, Lord, that are suffering so much tonight. We pray, Father, for uh, you to continue to encourage them. Uh, we pray that they might uh, be taken care of, uh, that the, the resources that they need will get to them. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you might bring that war to an end. And then, Lord, we... Uh, pray for all of our leaders in our country. Uh, we pray for the upcoming elections this year, Lord, that you'll make whatever changes need to be made. And then, Father, we pray for our missionaries. We thank you for them and all that they do. Many, Father, are in that uh, situation over in the European countries. We pray for them as uh, they're faced with having to deal with all of that and pray it'll be an opportunity for growth, our spiritual growth for people as they put their faith and trust in you. We love you tonight. We thank you, Father, for watching over us. Bless now our time of Bible study. Give me freedom, Father, as, I, as we look into the Word to be able to share the things you've laid upon my heart. I love you, and, lo and, and just pray that you'll be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you will take your Bible, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Yes. Oh, okay. I knew the ninth was something. I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah, Saturday from 8 to about 1 probably. Uh, we've got to get, uh, Miss Fanny's got a trailer. We need to get it moved, but we can't move it because it's, uh, it's got a cover over it. Uh, you know, a wooden with metal roof. And, we've got, and we want to save it. We don't want to just tear it down. So we need some help. We need people that be be able to get up on ladders, amen? Uh, if you can't get up on a ladder, you can come over and stand around and act like you know what you're doing or something. But we really need guys that can get on the ladder, get up on the roof, or, or down on the ground and help uh, as far as taking the metal off and then taking the wood structure down. And so if you can help, uh, we'll... Uh, where's it at? Okay. Right there, okay. So you go into Riverside Harbor, which is right up on the other side of, uh, of uh, Harmon Creek. You'll turn right in there, stay on that road. It'll go all the way down, and it'll automatically turn back to the left, and then you'll see about 100 yards down there, you'll see the trailer with the top on it, so we need to get it off. So if you can help us Saturday morning, I'll try to do a call out and remind you, but if you can help us, we sure would appreciate it. It won't take long if we got enough people, but if there's, yeah, hammers and nail bars okay anything you can pull a nail with so that it's put on there with nails okay so screw guns won't help okay whatever can pull a nail that's what we do a... all right so you got it we'll give a call out to you remind you eight o'clock saturday morning eight o'clock saturday morning okay we're not feeding Somebody bring donuts, Olga. Okay. Snakes are out, so be careful. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're down to verse 7. It's interesting we're talking about I'm so glad you came tonight. Did you know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about we're going to talk about money. Yeah, talk about giving. People find out you're going to talk about giving. They find a way to miss out. They don't want to hear it. I don't know what the problem is. One of the greatest. Uh, I I went to Simi Valley to start a church. 
And I got out there. This was the first time I'd ever done anything like that as far as starting a church. And uh, <clears throat> we got started. And there was another fellow there that had started about the same time I did. And he and I became fast friends, and we'd visit. And I went over to his church one time, and there he had this offering box sitting right in the middle of the aisle when he came in the church building. And uh, I said, wow, that's pretty bold. And uh, I said, you, you preach on giving a lot? He said, well, I preach on it when necessary. He said, don't you? And I said, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable preaching about giving. He said, Brother Jim, he said, you're robbing your people of the greatest blessing they could have because that's where God blesses whenever we learn to give, right? He broke my heart. I tell you, he didn't break my heart. He convicted my heart. So I went back and preached a whole bunch of messages on giving and uh, so <laughs> to make sure I got it right. But I don't have to. And people will say, well, why don't you preach on giving more? Well, because I preach through the Bible, and when the Bible talks about it, I talk about it. When the Bible doesn't talk about it, I don't have to. But the Bible's going to talk about it tonight pretty, pretty poignantly. And so uh, just... Uh, if you, if you have a problem with that, just go ahead and put your seatbelt on and ride through, okay? And uh, hopefully when we get done, then you will either change your opinion or you'll be more solidly opposed to giving as you always have been. So it's up to you. But let's talk about it, all right? We, we, we started last week because Paul had talked about the church in Macedonia. Macedonia was a Roman colony. It was a very poor church. It was suffering because of the poverty level of the church and the people there. But, it was, uh, but, but whenever he went there, they challenged him. They said, look, we've got an offering. We want you to take this offering uh, to the church at Jerusalem. We hear they're, they're suffering. Now, understand, if you look at your map, Macedonia is a long ways from Jerusalem. They didn't know. All they had was just hearsay what was going on. But they heard things were going bad, and they said, we can do something. We can take up an offering. And so they were taking up an offering. And remember, Paul kind of was a little reluctant to take it from them because he knew they needed it. But he went and they, were, they challenged him, said, you've got to, you've got to do this. And so he took it, and uh, he's bringing it to Jerusalem, or sending it to Jerusalem. Well, he shares this with the Corinthian church because the Corinthian church is just the opposite. It's a very affluent church. It has, it has people with money in it. it has, they have a lot of things. In fact, Paul's going to talk about that. They've got a lot of things that go on there. It's a very, very... Uh, uh, it's just a very progressive church. And so uh, he's challenging them with this idea of giving. But the church also, remember this, the church at Corinth was suffering because there had been some false apostles, false teachers had come in there, and they began to uh, lambast the apostle Paul. Paul was the one that was asking for them to prepare these offerings. And uh, what had happened was they began to say, he's just coming to get your money, you don't want to do that. And they had, they had convinced many of them not to give. And uh, so Paul's trying to kind of soothe the nerves there to remind them he is an apostle and they need to be faithful. So look at verse 7. Therefore, now let me instruct you, he says, Corinth, on your giving. Therefore, as you abound in everything, this is this church, this is a church that abounds in everything. They had, uh, they had been very uh, active and involved. He says, you've, been, you've abounded in everything. And then he lists these things in faith because they were strong in uh, their reliance on God. They had learned to do that. Remember, Titus had come to him and said, man, they had revival there. And Paul says, hey, look, you've, 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 you've had this resurgence. You've had this revival. Uh, you've had this renewal. You, are, you abound in everything in faith, in utterance, that's logos, the word of truth, teaching doctrine. He said, you do that. And knowledge, that's the ability to apply doctrine to the situations they're involved in. And in all diligence, the word diligence means eagerness. They had a passion, a spiritual passion for the work of God. And in your love, and the word there is agape, which is God's love, unconditional love to us. He said, your love for us, your agape for us. So he says, you, you abound in faith and utterance and knowledge and diligence and love. See that you abound in this grace also. What grace is he talking about? Giving, giving. He said, abound in this one too. Let me be able to be proud of you for this one as well. Let me be able to say you abound in your giving as well. That'd be a good thing. Amen? Yeah, that's a weak amen if I ever heard one. <laughs> Have I got a bunch of non-givers in here? Amen. Thank you. You know, 
If you get quiet when the preacher preaches on giving, you're exposing the fact. So you need to kind of go overboard. Amen. <laughs> All right, abound in this grace also. I love that. God, Paul refers to giving as grace. It's grace. It's an opportunity. It's, it's the ability to do something that you couldn't normally do. It's, a, it's, it's taking care of somebody you wouldn't normally be able to take care of. Give grace, he says. That's what we need to have is this grace of giving also. Verse 8, I speak not by commandment. I like that. You see, I can't, I'm not going to come and make you sign a pledge or a document. Excuse me. I'm going to sneeze in a second. I'm not going to come and make you sign a document. You know there's churches, Radio Church of God. Anybody familiar with Radio Church of God? That's the old Armstrong church. Damn, kind of defunct now. I, had a, I worked for a boss that was a member of the Armstrong. You say, you shouldn't talk about other churches. Well, I'll, let me explain something to you. This was, they were, they were cultic. Anyway, when you became a member of that church, you signed a contract with them. And you brought your IRS return, you brought your eternal, and you, you brought your IRS uh, page, you brought your return, you brought it to them so they could see how much you made last year. And if you hadn't given the 10% that's required, they dunned you for it. Yeah, Faye, what do you think? We ought to do that? I think it's a good idea. Paul said, I'm not preaching this out of commandment. I'm not teaching you something that's required. We're not making you sign anything. You're not having to sign in blood that you're going to give. It's got to be voluntary. Why, why does it need to be voluntary? It's got to come from the heart. If you feel like you've got to give, you're giving for the wrong reason. I've said all the time, if, you, if, you're, if you're starting to give to the church, and you get aggravated because you've got to write a check out, don't write the check. Just put it back up. God doesn't need it. God does not need your money. Your giving is just an opportunity to demonstrate your love for your Lord and for His work. That's all that is. And if you don't get a joy out of that, then you ought, I just think you ought to just keep it. God doesn't need it. We don't need it. It's what God wants us to do. We need to do it out of love, not out of a, a have to thing not out of commandment he says I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others he said I speak of by and what he said here's what he said I'm not telling you have to do this but I am giving you an illustration about the church of Macedonia how they give so you, you might want to watch and see how they give you might want to listen to some of the folks that do give I we need to have a night of just uh, testimonies of giving how blessed you are for giving. Now, I've not asked anybody to do that. Is there anybody that would like, to, that you've really been blessed in giving and you'd like to give just a quick testimony? Anybody? I'll let you. Brother Lawrence? Stand up so they can see you, would you, brother? In fact, come down here. Come down here, would you? Well, because they see you on the TV. I'm, I know, but you're so good looking. They need to see you. The last time you volunteered, no, 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 no. Way back when, um, I got away from the Lord. My wife was with, uh, said, I really like to go to church. So she started taking her to church. Then she said, I'd really like to go to Sunday school. And I started going to Sunday school. And through this, I got back with the Lord. And then one day she said, you know, I really think we should tithe. And things were tight back then. You know how when we were kids and married, you didn't have any money. And I finally gave in. I started giving to the Lord. And since then, we never went hungry. We never missed bills. And over the years, I started making more money. Gave the Lord more money. And... It has gotten to the point in my life that I'm afraid not to give to the Lord <laughs> because I have been blessed beyond compare. So, uh, not that we make a lot of money, but I, I make sure that the Lord gets more than, than what he's given to me because throughout my life, the last 
30 or 40 years that we've been been tithing, uh, we've been truly blessed. Amen. And then we're blessed to find this church. So the, thought, the Lord is still looking after us. Trust in Him and He will provide. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, brother. Amen. <laughs> Jana? Giving. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's, a, there's, a, there's probably a hundred testimonies in here. I mean, it's just one after the other. Ruby? Who? Eddie? Did you want to share? Amen. Amen. Got a new mower. <laughs> Carol Lee? Stand up. I, I want them to be able to hear, and I don't know if they'll be able to. Good. Amen. Sure, sure. Amen. Amen. Well, like I say, it, there's some, probably 100 testimonies here. I want to move on because I want you to see the rest of this in the passage because it's really, really is good. Um, he goes on to say, now watch this. He said, not by commandment, but by occasion of forwardness to others and to prove the sincerity of your love. There you go. See, that's what I tell you. It's not about how much you give. It's not about trying to earn God's favor by giving. It's a matter of being able to prove your love. It's, it's the way you demonstrate your love. Now, you say, well, do you, does everybody know how much I give? No. So who are you proving it to? The Lord. Amen? That's what giving's about. You don't know how much I give. I'd be glad to tell you. I'm not ashamed of what I give. But I, you don't need to know what I give because that doesn't matter. It's between me and the Lord. But I can tell you this. My giving demonstrates my love for the Lord. And I don't, I don't have to prove that to you. God knows. And so I, I give. I started out giving I, the 10%. I I, I was taught 10% giving, 10% giving. So I gave 10%, and I started out giving 10%. Whenever I realized I've been saved by grace, grace goes beyond the law. I'm not under the law. I decided, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give 11%, or I'm going to give 12%, because I'm not going to be under the law. I don't want to be dictated by 10%. And I know some people, and maybe you're one of those, you get your check, and it's, it's, it's something that, and you measure it out right to the penny, so you give your 10%. Well, praise God, at least you do that. But, but you know what? Round it up. 
Just see if you can outgive God. You cannot outgive God. I promise you, you just can't do it. It's amazing. And uh, this is what we need to understand. It's, by, it's because of our love. That's, what, that's the test of true love. It's not about a feeling. It's about action. And that's what love is all about. Verse 9. For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, and that's not speaking about monetary things, it's talking about his righteousness. He was rich in his righteousness, amen? Though he was rich, yet for your sakes, for your and my sakes, well, he became poor. He, he gave his righteousness to us, that we through his poverty might be made rich. I tell you, what an awesome thing God did. He left heaven where he was robed in glory and he's the king, he's the creator, and he came to earth to be born of a woman wrapped in swaddling clothes. He had a diaper on. Mary had to change him just like you had to change your babies. The God of the universe allowed his creation to do that. Why? Because he wanted us to have what he had. To be rich, that's exactly right. I found this story, and I think it's good. There's a story told of a Persian monarch who reigned in opulence and splendor, living amid the wealth and comfort of the royal palace. Yet his concern for the common people frequently drove him to dress as a poor man, leave the palace, and mingle with the lowest of his subjects. One day he visited a fireman whose job it was to heat the water in the bathhouse. Dressed in tattered clothes, the shah descended the long flight of steps down to the tiny cellar where the fireman sat in a pile of ashes tending the fire. The ruler sat beside him, and the two men began to talk. At lunchtime, the fireman shared his humble meal of coarse bread and water with his guest. Eventually, the shawl left, but he returned again and again, his heart filled with sympathy for the lonely man. The fireman opened his heart to his kind, compassionate friend who gave him wise counsel. Finally, the shawl could not bear to keep up the, pest, the pretense any longer and decided to reveal his true identity to his friend. He then asked the poor fireman to name a gift he could give him. To his surprise, the man said nothing, but merely sat looking at him with love and wonder. Thinking he had not understood him, the shaw offered to make the fireman rich, elevate him to nobility, or make him a ruler over a city. But he replied, Yes, my lord, I understand you, but leaving your palace to sit here with me, partake of my humble food, and listen to the troubles of my heart, even you, could not, even you could give no more precious gift than that. You may have given rich gifts to others, but to me you gave yourself. I only ask that you never withdraw your friendship from me. Isn't that a great story? Isn't that what Jesus did? You know, in all the things he could offer us, the greatest thing he has offered us is a relationship. Just to walk with us and talk with us and be with us. No greater thing than that. And that in itself ought to bring up that emotion of love that acts to give because of all that he's done for us. He's so good to us. Verse 10, And here and I give him my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. So here's where he talks about, he said, this is important for you. This is, I give you this advice. It's expedient for you. You stop because somebody told you I was misusing these funds, that I was taking advantage or I was embezzling, and people told you that, and you quit giving, you quit doing what you know you're supposed to do. And Paul said it's expedient that you get back to giving like you did, but, but also to be forward a year ago, not only to start giving, but go ahead and make up what you didn't give. I tell you what, it's the coolest thing. We've had this happen several times here where somebody will come in and they get convicted. You know, he said, I used to give, and I haven't given in a couple of years, and I'm catching up today. And they write this check, and you go, you know, like, okay, <laughs> glad you got caught up, you know. <laughs> but it's amazing when people do that. And I'm not saying that that's a requirement. It's not, if you hear me preaching this is required of you, you're missing the boat. This is something you ought to want to do. Uh, it's always, it's amazing when God gives us extra money. God ever some all just, he'll just dump something in our lap. We hadn't expected. And for us, the first thing we do is, how much of this we're going to give the Lord? 
How much of it? All of it? Half of it? Third of it? What are we going to give? And we always wind up giving. Because we love to give. We see God bless that. And we're so glad to be a part of that. It, it really connects you when you give the way you're supposed to. Verse 11, now therefore perform the doing of it. He says, get on with it. That as there was a readiness of will, you used to do this. There was a desire there before. So there may be a performance also out of that which you have. Then go ahead and do it. Don't just talk about doing it. Do it. Now there needs to be that some kind of action. I had a man one time, and he was a member of our church, and, and uh, he, he was convicted about it. In fact, he didn't give. But he was writing a book. And uh, he's gone now, but, so I can tell you this story. But he's gone now, and I'm going to tell you who it is. But uh, he's gone now. Uh, he went on to be with the Lord. But he came to my office one day. He said, Brother Jim, I just want you to know I'm writing this book. And when I sell this book, I'm going to tithe to the Lord. And I looked and I said, no, you won't. He said, yes, I will. I said, no, you won't. I said, you don't do it with what you have. What makes you think you'll do it when you get something else? And I'm going to tell you something. If you don't give with what you've got, you say, well, I just don't have anything. The Lord said that. All of us have been in that boat where we say, well, I just don't have anything. What? I can't give. I don't have enough to even make it through the end of the week or the month. I can't give. I can't give. If you won't give off of what you got, you won't give when you've got it to give. It's not about how much. It's a matter that you want to give and you make the effort to do it. God will bless that. And you'll be blessed for doing it. I'm telling you the truth. Verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind. See, that's what's got to happen first. It is acceptable according to that a man has. And not according to what he doesn't have. That's what I just said, isn't it? It's not about what you don't have. Well, Lord, you know, I, I would give if I could. I just don't have it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have it, Lord. I don't, I don't have it. See, I'm... I'm I'm dead broke, Lord. Look at there. I'm dead broke. The other pocket? Well, well, just understand, I'm broke on this side. <laughs> you know, you've got that $6 in the other pocket. Is any of that mine, Jim? Well, I was saving that to buy my meal on Wednesday night. Okay. Is any of that mine? That's all I'm asking i got to make a decision, don't I? Well, don't give by what you have. Don't wait till you have it to give. Give because you want to. Amen? How many of you, when you were thinking about having your family, uh, either you said or somebody said, you ought to wait till you can afford to have them babies? <laughs> Did anybody wait? We didn't, we were in the middle of college and we didn't have a, no, we didn't either. <laughs> we didn't have a pot to pee in and a window to throw it out. That's what Jeff said the other day. I know, yeah, I finally said it. We were broke. I mean, you know, we just were barely making by. But God laid upon our heart to have children. We had children, you know. Same thing with giving. I don't, I don't have to wait for God to bless me with something to give. I just need to be faithful to what God's given me. Whatever it is. You know, if it's a dime, then it's a dime. If it's a dollar, it's a dollar. If it's a ten, it's a ten. If it's a twenty, it's a twenty. It's, it's whatever I have, I need to give. Uh, verse 13. For I mean not that other men be eased and you burdened. I, this is interesting. You know, right now we have a bunch of this equity and equality going around. That word's being thrown around a lot. Isn't it? You're going to find it right here in the Bible. Listen to this. He said, For I mean not that other men be eased and you burden. He said, I'm not talking about, you know, you having to give everything and others aren't giving at all. That's not what he's saying. He said, But by an equality. Oh, there's the word. That now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want and their abundance also may be a supply for your want. That there may be equality. You know, if people just were faithful in their giving... It would all work out. Those that don't have a lot, they give the little bit that they have. They're faithful to do that. And God blesses somebody and they can give more. It all works out. There's an equality. It works out. 
You say, so if I don't give, somebody else is going to give and I don't have to worry about that? Well, that's true. But then you miss out on the blessing. And that's a shame, isn't it? We ought to want to give and we ought to realize the importance of giving. And I think if we, if we give proportionately, and I, I, I really think that's important, I'll be honest with you, before you decide, make a decision, purpose in your heart, the Bible says, purpose in your heart, so you make a decision about what your proportion is going to be, proportionate giving. So you say, all right, I'm going to give 10%. All right, if you start there, that's where you want to start, 10%. I'm going to give 10% of everything God gives me. And next week you get a raise, and you get, get that raise, you say, now God, I didn't include that part. <laughs> and God said, well, I sent it to you because you made the commitment. You know, or you, you get your income tax back, and, you know, it was a lot bigger return than you thought. You know, well, Lord, I... I was going to give 10%, but Lord, you, I didn't know you was going to send me this much. I, I'm going to just give 3%. You better, if you make the, if you make the commitment, stick with it. And uh, I'm not saying do it out of commandment, but make it and know that God's going to bless. And when he blesses, be glad to give. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Oh, y'all say, I'd be glad when he gets over this. Well, I'm not through yet. <laughs> Verse 15, as it is written, he that hath, had gathered much, had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Now here he refers back. If you remember back, he refers back to the Old Testament whenever uh, God gave the manna. Remember, they would go. he said, I'm, you go out every day, six days you go out and you collect the manna. On Sunday you don't collect. On, I mean, on Saturday you don't collect. On Sabbath you don't collect any. But only collect what you need to eat for that day, each day. You're going to collect every day. Well, some of them said, i got a great idea. I'm going to collect enough where I don't have to go out and collect in the morning. So they doubled up and they got it all together. They ate the little portion they had for that night. They were full. They went to bed the next morning. What did they have? A bucket full of worms. Go ahead and eat if you want to. There's plenty of manna laying out there. Go get you some more manna, but don't be eating the worms. Amen? And then they come to Saturday, the, the, they come to the Sabbath day, the Friday night before the Sabbath starts, and they're going, now, whenever I doubled up during the week, it turns to worms, what's going to happen if I double up now because tomorrow's the Sabbath and I've got to have enough for the Sabbath? And they said, well, what are we going to do? So they go out and they, they pick up double what they need and they're hoping and praying by the morning it's not turned to worms. Guess what? It's not turned to worms because God told them. See, that's the way he wanted them to do it. And this verse is referring to that. As is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over. He didn't need anything extra. And he that gathered little had no lack. He had plenty. And that's the same way with, our, with what God gives us. Like Jana said, you know, it may come to the end of the month and not have anything extra. That's okay. I made it. You know, I made it till the next check or I, I made it till God provided the extra. And, and God always provides that last little bit. He always does. I have a wonderful gift. I have a wonderful testimony about giving. I, it's amazing the things God does. When we were in college, Ruby and I, uh, we were up in Indiana, and we were, we, we looked like we were doing real well. We lived in a three-bedroom house. We had the two cars. We looked like we were doing good. You realize when people have that kind of stuff, that usually means they're in debt up to their ears, right? Well, we, we, were, we, were, we weren't in debt, but we, we, we looked like we had money, but... I worked just like everybody else, and sometimes it just ran short, and this month it ran short. And I came home and I told Ruby, we just didn't have any money to buy groceries. And we've got a baby, and what are we going to do? Well, the school had given all the married students a 25-pound uh, bag of um, pinto beans, and we had cornmeal to make cornbread. So we weren't going to go starving, but we were going to get sick and tired of beans and cornbread, I'm going to tell you. But it was only for a week or so, and we'd be all right. And I went into, uh, I got my check, I went into the bedroom, and I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? I had some bills that had to be paid. And if I pay all my bills, I'm not going to get to feed my family. I don't know what to do. And I just prayed, and the Lord took me to Psalm 37. And in Psalm 37, it made a statement about that. Um, let me read it to you. I've got time to do this, so I'll just do this, and then we'll... Be end, probably end at that point. Let me just share this with you. Psalm 37. 
I, this, and when I get in trouble, I go to the Lord's word. I just, I say, Lord, give me something. And the Lord always does. And this is what he gave me. I was reading through this. Here I am. I've got a check. I can pay all these bills. I can pay every bill, but that means I can't buy groceries. Or I can buy groceries, and I've got, it means I can't pay all my bills. So I'm reading Psalm 37. And it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass, wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. And I read that, and I thought, now here's what God spoke to my heart. He, says, he said, dwell in the land. Well, when I looked at those bills, to me that was dwelling in the land. And he said, if I'll take care of dwelling in the land, he said, I will be fed. And that's what I heard. And I said, Lord, if that's what you're telling me, I'm paying the bills. And I paid the bills. I walked out of that room with that stack of envelopes, and I told Ruby, I said, baby, no food. We just, we're going to make do, you know, with the beans and cornbread. We'll just make do. I left to go to work. I got to work, and I, a college student, preacher boy, there was about 12 of us that worked at Blah Knox Foundry in East, East Chicago, Indiana. And um, I was a welder. Well, that night, I didn't say anything to anybody. I didn't ask anybody for prayer. I didn't anything. I said, this is what God wants. If we need to fast, we'll fast, whatever. And so I, I got down. I got busy. And I was welding. I was doing my thing. It got to be, I worked three to 11 shift. It was about 15 minutes till 11. One of these fellows, one of my friends, came over. He tapped me on the shoulder, and I popped my welding hood up. And I said, what's up? He said, Jim, he said, the guys felt like we wanted to do something for you. And he said, here. And he handed me $36 and like 25 cents. Now, remember, we're talking back in the 1970s, okay? So that was a lot of money back then. You know, $36, you buy a lot of food. So I called Ruby, and I said, meet me at the, uh, at the, the uh, grocery store. So the guys dropped me off there, and I met Ruby, and we went through, and I said, just let's get only what we need so we can make it. And we went through that store, and Ruby just, she was very careful. She picked out just exactly what we need. And we got up to the checkout stand, and they rung it up, and it was like $35.75. And I looked at Ruby and smiled. And I said, you know, the Lord says that uh, he would, wants to give us the desires of our heart. Do you want a Milky Way or a Snickers? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, God will always come through. Not always like that. He doesn't put a check in the mail. He doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always answer like that. But God always will take care of you if you trust him. But in the area of giving, that's, an, that's part of that part that you've got to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and trust God. You know, I don't know that we can make it, but I know I'm supposed to give. I'm going to, I'm going to try to trust God in this. You realize how silly that is, don't you? God never fails, amen? He's never failed me yet, amen? He never fails. And all we have to do is just trust him. If we would just trust him, that's all we have to do. You say, well, I just don't have much. It doesn't matter. That's not what God's concerned about. You remember the little lady that he was standing next to the treasury? Remember, you know the story. The little lady, the little widow lady come up. All these people were coming in, and back then, of course, the temple, they had the temple tax and all, and they were coming up, and they had these big old trumpets sticking out, and these trumpets, they worked for music, but they looked like trumpets, and they would come in there, and they'd put their money in there. They'd put their jewels in there, and, they, and that's the way they paid their tithe, their temple tax. And so all these people are coming up, you know, the rich and famous, they're all coming up there, and they, they're looking around, see what I'm putting in here, and the next one come up, and he'd put it in, and oh, they were so, and this little widow lady, she come by, I wish I had my little purse. I've got it in my desk. She come at my grandmother. This is, I see my grandmother doing this. She had one of those little snap purses. You know what I'm talking about, little black snap purses. She always carried it in the, you know. <laughs> Can you see the little widow lady? She comes up to the thing, and she looks around, and she reaches down, and she pulls out a little purse, and she snaps it open, and she jiggles it, and she dumps two little old pennies out of it, and that's all there is, and she snaps it and puts it back and she takes the two pennies and puts it in the treasury. And the Lord is sitting there with his disciples and he said, did you see that? 
And they go, what? Did somebody put a whole bunch in? He said, no, did you see the little widow lady? The one that came out there with nothing? Did you see what she gave? What was it, two pennies? You didn't see what she gave. She gave it all. She gave it all. And I'm going to ask you a question. You won't, you won't find it in Scripture, but I, I guarantee you, you'll get the answer right. Do you think she ever went without from that point on? You, I guarantee you she didn't. Uh-huh. Where? You can? Tell me where it's at. Oh, no, I don't know right off. It'll be one of the Gospels. It's in Luke. Patty says it's in Luke. Uh, it's just amazing that God, God, you, to think that we're, oh, if I just trust God, if I can just trust God, if he will just do what he says he'll do, he will. You and I won't, but he will. Be faithful in your giving. All right, I'm going to finish. As is written, where do I go? But thanks be to God, verse 16, but thanks be to God which put the same earnest care in the heart of Titus for you. I'll stop at verse uh, 15. We didn't get very far, but... I think we got through the giving part now, so you'll be safe to come back next week. And <laughs> if in any way you were put on, I, I hope it didn't. If you're not a regular giver, then pray about what God would want you to do. It's Luke 21. Okay, thank you. Bob? Right. <laughs> Winning's the only thing. No. Well, that's true, but not really because God's God. You know, the like I said last week, the happiest people in the world are the poorest people. The poorest people are the most. They have more joy than rich people. Rich people are always afraid somebody's going to get what they got. But poor people, they don't have to worry about it. Leave the door unlocked. If they want it, let them take it. <laughs> they need it more than I do, so it's okay. You know, I don't know. Amen. All right, I'm going to stop there. Guys, it's been good tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's, uh, it's been fun, but I know it's been an eye-opener maybe for some of you. Just trust God, that's all. Just trust God. I've said this before. If you want to, just go ahead and ask God. Just ask him, Lord, do you think I should give? Just ask him. And then just do what he says. That's all you need to do. Okay? And if he tells you don't give, don't give. It's just that simple. I'll, I'm okay. Yeah, you can do it online. You, there's so many ways. I would tell you this. Do not put it on your credit card unless you pay that credit card off every year. You know, don't be... God doesn't want you to put you in debt. That's not what he wants you to do. Give what you've got. That's what you need to do. All right. All right, let's stand and be dismissed with a word of prayer. We're running just a little bit over, and I know the choir has some work to do tonight. And uh, so uh, let's uh, pray and get out of their way so they can get busy, all right? Thank you for being here. It's a good crowd, and uh, great to have all of you here. And like I say, I hope it's a blessing to you. Father, Lord, I thank you for this evening. Lord, I, I thank you for the opportunity to give, that we have, a, we have a venue, we have a vehicle by which we can demonstrate our love to you. You demonstrate your love to us every day by the way you take care of us, by the awesome things you've done just to save us. And Father, we have very few ways to be able to demonstrate our love to you, but this is one of them. And you've told us that we could try you in this, that you will take care of us and we, we will uh, be blessed by giving. And so Lord, I pray for all of us in this room that we'll consider what we give and then be faithful to what you lay upon our heart. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.